Welcome to today's webinar on managing your spoilage, one of a continuing series of educational webinars from Windowbook. My name is Monica Lundquist, and I am Postal Affairs and Technical Support Manager here at Windowbook. Assisting me today is our industry mailing software specialist, Steve Dowdy. The specific agenda items that we'll be covering during today's webinar are as follows. What is spoilage? The benefits of reporting spoilage the Postal Service rules for reporting spoilage, tools that you need to manage spoilage reporting, and a live demo showing how spoilage can be reported using Windowbook's DATMAIL software. And then we'll wrap up with a Q&A session. Spoilage is defined for postal purposes as situations where there is a mismatch in the quantities reported in the electronic files and or documents versus the quantity that's actually mailed. This mismatch can be due to spoilage or shortage, but for purposes of this webinar, we will term both of these collectively as spoilage. Virtually every mail production environment will have spoilages or shortages. Since this is a manufacturing process, it isn't foolproof, and there will almost always be instances where the planned quantities do not match the quantities that are actually mailed. This can occur during normal manufacturing processes, which may result in pieces getting damaged, or in startup processes where pieces may be wasted as the equipment is brought up to speed. Shortages generally occur when one or more of the components of the mail piece run short, such as running out of envelopes or reply pieces, or perhaps all the components run short. Regardless of the cause, spoilage or shortage can impact the number of pieces that are actually mailed. And if this quantity is significant, it can really impact your bottom line. There are a number of benefits to reporting spoilage. First, it provides for a method to properly account for all the pieces in situations where each and every mail piece must be accounted for. For example, it is critical that financial statements or legal notifications reach the end recipient. So when these types of pieces are spoiled, it is important to account for the spoiled pieces. In addition, new pieces are generally recreated to replace these spoiled pieces. So it is important that the spoiled pieces are reported and deducted to be able to properly reconcile counts. Even when the mail pieces are not critical financial or legal documents, it is still important to be able to account properly for the pieces that are actually mailed. This is beneficial for any number of historical, statistical, and auditing reports. Another very important benefit is the cost savings. Depending on the total quantity of the mailing and the manufacturing processes used to produce the mail pieces, spoilage can add up to a significant amount. In these cases, mailers should take advantage of spoilage reporting so that they are not paying postage for pieces that never get mailed. The Postal Service has provided specific guidelines for reporting spoilage. These are detailed in a Guide to Intelligent Mail for Letters and Flats. There are four methods for handling spoilage. All four methods apply to adjustments that are made before the final postage is made. Any spoilage reporting done after postage payment is finalized must be done manually using a hard copy form requesting a postage refund. We'll review this option in a moment. The four methods listed in the guide apply only to permit imprint mail. Mailers using a fixed postage, such as stamps, pre-canceled stamps or meter postage must use the manual method of submitting a refund request using Postal Service Form 3533. Methods 1 and 3 can be used for standard mail or first class mail only. Method 3 cannot be used by MLOCR mailers or manifest mailers. We'll discuss each of these methods individually in a moment. If you've already paid postage and wished to account for spoiled or wasted pieces, the only way to do this is to request a postage refund. To do this, you will need to contact your local post office to obtain a Postal Service Form 3533. These forms are now available in hard copy only because they have been revised to be uniquely barcoded. Once you have obtained the form, it should be completed following the instructions printed on the form or you can get more details by logging on to the Postal Service RIBS website and review Postal Bulletin 22252. Depending on the instructions and depending on 